glory to God. God bless you. Um, today, the 20th of August, 2023, I want to have a conversation with us. Uh, practically today, I'm not. I, I'm not in the mood to preach, but just to have a discussion with us regarding or pertaining to what is happening in the body of Christ. I am led in the spirit to discuss, have this discussion about the high rate of immorality have occurring in the church in the name of Christ amongst religious leaders who uses our younger ones girls and boys as says slave all in the name of mentoring them but before I do so I just want to read a passage in the scripture with us in case if you don't know who you are or whom you are I just want you to know that the privileges we have today is what many in the Old Testament days prayed for. The privilege we have, the grace of God we have today is what many prophets of old, Moses, named them, Elijah, Eli named any of them, prayed for, but they were not privileged. To partake in this wonderful, glorious moment we have through Christ Jesus. But we are still living our lives as if we are under those laws that they were born with in the Old Testament. There's something I want to tell you. If you don't know who you are or whose you are, I want to know, I want to tell you something that you ought to know by now. If you are born again and you have Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, you are the glory of God in human form. I repeat, if you are born again and you have Jesus, you accepted Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, you are a true definition of the glory of God in human form. So you, are, you should be a reflection of God's glory. Don't settle for less. But sadly, many of us, due to lack of understanding of the word of God, have settled for iniquity, knowingly, and perhaps many unknowingly. Now let's read 2 Corinthians chapter 2, Sorry, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 12 to 18. I'm going to read from New, uh, New King James Version. And I read, Therefore, we have such hope. We use great boldness of speech. Unlike Moses, who put a veil over his face so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the end of what was passing away. But their minds were blinded, for until this day, the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament, because the veil is taken away in Christ. But even to this day, when Moses is read, a veil lies on their hearts. Nevertheless, when one turns to, Lord, to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image, from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. I hope, I hope you understand this. It hurts me to see <coughs> how devil have manufactured every original of God. Devil faked every original of God and using it to deceive us, deceive a lot of you. In many churches, people 
want to they, are, they, they seek for signs and wonders and they end up seeing signs of wondering they end up being impregnated by the so-called church leaders recently there's this story in Nigeria a, a famous pastor in a state in Nigeria south south region who is widely known for his charitable acts to the to those in need but I remember one certain year I saw this man and I was led in the spirit and I felt he needs help and the people felt like this man is so big in the spirit in the realm of the spirit he's so big that's what they thought they say oh this man is such a huge servant of God is is how can you say he needs help I said truly this man needs help and you the body of Christ should help him nobody understood me but sadly the so-called celebrated minister the so-called man a billionaire he's very rich very wealthy how he's made his money I don't know because it's an insult to ask him how he made his money he's a man but I'm more concerned about souls that goes to him. Now, some vulnerable young girls have been impregnated by this man. And nobody can do nothing. Because to them, he is highly spiritual. I don't know what you classify as being spiritually strong. Many of you think that devil, they don't say, uh, you're a demon destroyer. How can you destroy a demon? when you cannot destroy a lap of a woman how can you boastfully say you can fight a demon when you can't resist the private side of a woman when you see anything in skirt you forsake the anointing you claim to have how I feel so bad, so ashamed, if I may use that word, that this man, not only that he impregnated all these ladies, young girls, young, vulnerable, poor ladies, but he asked them to abort the child, abort the children. And he used the police to intimidate them. And the government can do nothing. Because the problem of Africa is religion. He can try such nonsense in America. He can try such nonsense in a developed world. But no, in Africa, once you have, you have a church, oh, they say, oh, they dine with God. None of them dines with God more than you do dine with God. That's why I read this very place. None of your pastors dines with God more than you dine with God because God has given you his self, his spirit, the same spirit that raised Jesus from death. He says, if you believe, if you believe that same spirit that raised him from death dwells in you, it will quicken your mortal body. He didn't say additional spirit that raised Jesus. It's the same spirit. So stop condoning all this nonsense. Seeking, going from one prayer house to the other, seeking for prayers, devolving our children, exposing them to danger, all in the name of Christ. And the government can do nothing. I say the problem in Africa, especially in Nigeria, is not the government. It's the church, it's the institution, religious institution, sadly, which I belong to. That's the big problem. How can somebody be bigger than the authorities? When the Bible told, asked us to respect constituted authorities. Church is not a platform to promote adultery, fornication, ill-gotten wealth, laziness. Where the youths believe that when you shout in Jesus' name, Amen, money will appear in your bank account. And the economic crime prevention unit will do nothing about it. FBI will do nothing about it. All in the name of Christ. I feel so sad and disappointed.
I feel so sad and disappointed to say the least. Young, vulnerable children, homeless children, poverty infected children that the church has created. Helping them, you publicize it. Oh, when you give them money, you give you show them a placard to show to the world you give them money. But have you ever given an account how those money were donated to you? No, because you're larger than anything in life. Have you made publication of your donors to let us know who made donations and what amount made to your account, to the church? No, but when you give to the poor, you publicize it. The whole world knows you give your money to the poor. But when you sleep with some poor that you helped, nobody. So when, so when they speak out, <coughs> you attack dogs on internet, on social media, we come after them. Shame on you. I don't want to mention your name because I feel so, I don't want to glorify you. For the first time I saw this man, I said, pray for this man, he needs help. I never knew him. I've never met him one-on-one. -on -one. But for the first time, I said, this man needs help. I came from a country where we glorify stupidity and iniquity, all in the name of Christ. All in the name of Christ. If that is how the if that is how the scripture has been interpreted, you are making a mockery of the scripture that when a pastor misbehaves, you can't constructively correct him because you think he dines with God. That man you think dines with God. Is living in the same neighborhood with the Satan at night, but in the day you think he dines with God. He's a devil's reincarnate in the name of Christ. No wonder the Bible says that judgment will start in the church because a lot of immoralities is happening in the church. I, I wish there is other ways we can be saved apart from identifying with this so called religious thing in, 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 in Africa. Look at it in America. You can move freely. You have lights. You have everything. But back there, religion has killed Africans. They pray for everything. They pray for electricity. They pray for food. They pray for, for, for basic things that government can afford to them because church had corrupted their minds. The church of God have corrupted your minds. You misrepresent God. You no longer preach about salvation. You preach about your pastor. You talk about the ego of your pastor. About the miracles of your pastor. Can your pastor do any miracle? Your pastors are now prophets. Displaying the gift of the satanic gifts that was given to them to deceive you. And shame on you that sleep with them. Curse on you that sleep with such man that claim to be a man of God. And yet you sit down to listen to him speak all those nonsense from the Bible. I, I, I say to God, make me a better man. I don't want to preach this word of God. If I'm going to be a deceit, if I'm going to live a life, a deceitful lifestyle, I preach the gospel, then I'll be an adulterer. No. I'd rather be than to deceive people. And God said, listen, I can't help you. You have to help yourself. I said, how? Self-discipline. How can I do that? Self-discipline. I said, how can I do that? He said, if you have a value of what I have given you, if you have a value of the authorities I have given you, then respect that authority. That is what is called self-discipline. Sadly, all these pastors have no respect of what God has given them. When you see the lap of a woman, you will just misbehave and you will fall prey. And the funny thing is okay for you to fall because you're a human, but it's wrong for you to deny what you've done in the secret. That's what makes it iniquity. It's a sin when you fall. But when you ask a woman to a commit a, a abortion just to protect your name, what name do you have to protect? That is iniquity. And this pastor committed not once, not twice, severally 
and the wife is aware of that, and the government can do nothing, they'll call it blackmail. They want to silence the poor. There's something we call DNA. DNA proof that this man fathers th those children. And tomorrow, he will be a giver. The money you gave him in private, he will use it in the open to do nonsense without accounting and say, hey, this money, these are the donors. And they take that vain glory. I have no regret of being an African. I have no regret. I'm proud to be an African, but I'm so ashamed that we are our worst enemies. Africans. Look at what is happening in West Africa, the ECOWAS community. Look at what nonsense is happening. Tomorrow, you will just say, Africans are not being respected. How can the world respect you when you can't respect yourself? Is it not the same gospel that you preach that has been preached in America? Americans will go to church. Highest yes, they spend two hours in the church. They go to any church in Africa. The pastor will spend four hours doing nothing, exploiting the poor. And the poor will not be fed in the church. Here, if church stays more than that, they'll provide food for them to eat. Religion is a business. And God says, in the Old Testament, when Moses sees God, he covers his face. Because the people were not fit to see the glory of God. Because after seeing God, Moses' face was transformed and becomes the glory. He could not, they could not behold the glory of God. He had to wear a veil. But Jesus said, no, enough of this selective. Enough of these selective blessings. He had to die for me and you that the veil must be broken. But today, you are still under slavery. Spiritual slavery by your pastor who makes you believe he's a man of God. Then who are you? If a pastor is a man of God, are you a man of the devil? Nonsense. Stop it. They can't tell me that nonsense. They can't come to me and talk to me in that manner. They have no greater authority in heaven than me. If they refuse to identify themselves as a brethren, brother in Christ, then mind your lane. Don't get fooled and be deceived. If God fails to answer you when you pray, go and sleep. Because when God is silent, it means he's working for you. Don't go and meet that so-called man of God that is man of devil. Claiming to be man of God. Be careful whom you allow your children, your daughters to mingle with all in the name of Christ. It's very shameful. Very painful. People use the Bible, they use the scripture to commit all sorts of immoralities. That is not the Jesus I know. The Bible says, Acts 10 35, how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good, restoring and delivering those that were oppressed by the devil. That's what Jesus did with the anointing that was given to him. Jesus did not intimidate anyone. He says he went about doing good, delivering all that were oppressed by the devil. You bow to your pastor. Who the hell is your pastor? That he makes himself a demigod over you? He will sexually abuse you and you can't go and report him because when you speak, his attack dogs will fight. We must stop condoning this nonsense in the body of Christ. Otherwise, the punishment will be upon you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Like I said, this is not a message. But it's a message. Let he that has ear, let him hear the word of God and be free from systemic slavery and bondage all in the name of Christ because that is not how it should be Jesus died and paid the price of your sins go on your knees and pray if you think he has not heard you stop praying his ear is not deaf that he could not hear you it means he's walking when God is silent he's walking for you whenever you think he's silent he is walking for you God bless you Atawale